Well, hello and uh, welcome to this second version of tutorial 114, which uh, I've called 114 DT, and that DT stands for date time, which we'll be getting to in a moment. But somebody asked me after the release of the previous tutorial, tutorial 114, which, if you remember, drew zones all the way across the chart, would it be possible to create a very similar program, but just have those zones for specific times? So what I've done is modified the program, and instead of doing the lines the whole way across the chart, we're gonna be doing the lines between two specific times, and that's just gonna repeat day by day by day. So for example, um, here we have it applied to a euro dollar range bar chart and we've got some times 10 22 and 29 seconds to 14 57 and two seconds so you can see immediately that we're doing this to the second and then you can see the uh, the zones being drawn now the times don't necessarily reflect well actually there's two let me just show you the uh, inputs just so that you can see them more clearly so start time end time start time and end time now the the light the because for certain types of charts such as seconds chart tick chart range case uh, whatever charts you're going to find a situation where there is not a bar for a specific time and what we do then is we just go to the next bar so what I did initially uh, is I took a very simple approach, something a little bit like uh, I did last time and uh, just show you the, the program. And what I did, uh, the, the method was very similar apart from now we're using DT points um, and a DT point is formed by taking the, the time, date time in date time format and then a price value like, like so, DT point create but uh, just want to get ahead of myself the, uh, the the method was very similar to the one that we used in the previous tutorial as I mentioned but instead of BN points we're using DT points and if you don't know what I'm talking about you might just want to go back and look at uh, tutorial 114 and what I did is just at the start of each day when date is not equal to the date the previous bar I uh, effectively just defined a date, a date time start time date time format and I did that using the from EL date and time which is a method of the date time class and if you want to know more you can just right click and click on definition but what that takes is a date a time and then it also gives you the opportunity of including seconds so in this particular program in the other one I'm going to show you the seconds so that's defined by putting a point and then the number of seconds for, for instance, uh, 59 or 15 and so on. And then the program will go through and uh, work out how many seconds we're talking about. So we define the date time points and then we send the information to the method similarly as we did before for both the, the, uh, the first time zone, in other words, using start time one, end time one, and the second time zone, start time two, and end time two. And that works pretty well, but there is a big problem because what happens is when that's applied to a chart, so I'm just gonna to go to arrange all and, so what happens is historically, the, the zones occur quite nicely, but when we get into real time, and I've had this chart running for a little while now, what will happen is it fails to create those boxes for bars that are not visible that are not on the chart when the program is applied. So if I now refresh this, you'll see that that zone is uh, is extended, but it wasn't in the natural way. So you could keep on pressing Control R if you wanted to use that version, uh, but better, I think, to find a solution to it. So what I'm gonna do in the second part is show you how I made some changes to program in a, new, a separate program and just explain the, the various things that I did. But before I do that, I just recorded uh, another couple of examples 
earlier. So in this example, I've got the new program applied to the chart. And as you can see, a new bar formed and the, the new zone started. Now we're on a chart which has got the old program added to it. And uh, as you'll see in a few moments, the bar where the new zone is supposed to start, it just does not appear. And uh, what happens is I then refresh the screen, control R, and then you'll see the, uh, the zone beginning to start at the right hand side of the screen. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the, the new program, which I've called tutorial or underscore tutorial 114 DT2 and uh, just try and explain the way that I've got over those problems that we uh, we showed earlier on. Now the inputs stay the same. So we've got start time, end time, start time, end time, start time, end time one and two. And then we've got all the, the zones and uh, zone high, low colors, shading, etc. It's pretty much similar to the program or rather tutorial 114. So let's uh, let's go through and look at the program now. The draw box stays pretty much the same, although we do have a little bit of a difference down here. And essentially what we're saying is if this is a real time bar, and we'll look at the rest in a moment, but if this is a real time bar, I want to extend the box to the right. I'm going to set zone box dot extend right to true. And what I'm also going to do is store the rectangle named zone box into a vector and the vector is called real time boxes. And uh, you'll also see that in the one statement, we need to create a new instance of that vector. And we do that in the one statement. Now there is another occasion when we do this and I'll talk about that in a little while. But this is essentially for, for real time boxes. We're going to extend them to the right. Now in, in terms of uh, drawing the boxes, we've got two main areas here. One of them where we're drawing, let's call it box number one. In other words, start time one, end time one, etc. And the second one when we're drawing box number two. And in each case, we're calling the draw box method, which is pretty much the same method as we had before. Now, the slight difference here is we're doing this. We're saying if uh, this bar is greater or equal to the start time and the previous bar is less than the date time start time, then we're going to go through and uh, call the method with one other thing we're saying. We're saying if box one is false, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Now, the big thing to notice here is that because this program runs on situations where we have times to the second, we need to use date time. And we get the date time for the current bar just using bar date time. It's just a, a standard keyword. Now, in f as far as the, the date time of the, the start time, we actually have to create uh, an object to do that. And we do that here in uh, uh, once a day at the beginning when the date changes, uh, we, we call it DT start time one. And that is done by using date time. And then one of the uh, methods of that is from EL date and time. And what that allows you to do, as uh, I think I said in the uh, earlier on, is you put in the date, the time, and then the number of seconds. And I've got that information from the input. If you remember, we had a time, then point, and then we're putting the seconds in the point. If you want to use seconds and uh, you, you don't have to. So that means that we can actually detect a bar at the beginning of the period or just after the beginning of the period um, down to the second accuracy, which is very useful for tick charts, second charts and, and things such as uh, uh, three line break and, uh, and whatever else charts. So that is uh, calling drawing the, the rectangle and we do a very similar thing for the second box. Now, if this is a historic and historic box, then what we just simply do is we can draw the box with the start time and the end time, and then we're done. We don't need to do anything else. But if this is a real time box, what we need to do is 
as we see here, it's a real time box. We're going to set box one to be true. And similarly with, uh, with the second box or zone or, or rectangle, whatever you call it, we're going to set box two to be true. And then what happens is if this is a real time bar, we then need to bear in mind at the moment, historic boxes have been drawn start to end, but the real time, uh, we may be on a chart where the end time is not visible yet. So what we do is that box is currently extended to the right. We then have a, another final routine here. And what this is saying is if, if this is a real time bar and if uh, the, the bar date time is greater or equal to the date time end time and the previous bar was less than the, uh, the bar date time um, DT end time one, or this is for the, the second box. Similarly, bar date time is greater or equal to DT end time two, and bar date date time one bar ago is less than DT. Let me just move that across so you can see it. End time two, and box one is true, or box two is true. So we know that these things have been drawn in real time. Then what we're going to do is go through the vector. If you remember, we've got a vector. Uh, for real-time rectangles, we're storing them each time in a vector. So we need to go through the vector and uh, we need to store the rectangle in uh, a, uh, an object called box. And we need to find the end price of that particular box. And then what we do is set the end point. And we do that, we need to set it to the current bar, date time, which is bar date time and the price, which is the one we just got from the existing box, because it doesn't change, value 23. And then the final thing we need to do is set the extension to be equal to false. We don't need it extended anymore. We also set box one to false and box two to false. And what that means is that we're ready to draw a new real-time box. Now I mentioned there was one other slight subtlety to this, and that is for situations where the it's either real time or the date is equal to the current date and the date time of the, uh, the last calc time is greater than DT start time one and the uh, date time dot from EL date and time D last calc time is less than that. What we're saying there is this last calc time, this tells you the time of the last bar on the chart. And we're saying that if we have a situation where we've already drawn a box, we're extending it to the right, but we're currently in a situation where that started historically. And what we're doing now is we're making sure that, uh, that we set the box one to be true or the box two to be true just look below here so that we go and we terminate we stop that box we set the endpoint for that box at the appropriate time so that's a little uh, subtlety there and that also applies in the method so in the method if you remembered we'd set the zone box extend right to be true and we added the rectangle to the uh, vector if it was a real time bar we also do that if the date is the current date and we're in a bar that's developing, but it was started historically. And that's what this information here finds. Okay, so I think I've covered all the main uh, points of this program. There's quite a few technical lessons. I'm sure there are plenty of, way to solve, plenty of ways to uh, solve this problem. And I'm not saying necessarily that this is the best, but this is what I used in this case. Uh, at any event, there's lots of uh, technical uh, coding lessons there, which I think you uh, may find useful. For Gold Pass members, I'm going to make it available for free so you can uh, copy and paste the program from markplex.com. Anyway, hope you found this useful. Thank you.